Okay, class, um, <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, offering you a series of uh, brief lecturettes. Uh, that's how I approach uh, this type of online uh, forum. And um, these will be fairly brief. I did want to mention a couple of things uh, from the get-go. Uh, you have an assigned reading on uh, competing theories of leadership, or perhaps I shouldn't say competing. Uh, the very variety of leadership theories. Um, I suggest uh, that you give that a good close read. Uh, to me it encapsulates uh, very effectively um, the prevailing leadership theories and the evolution of leadership studies. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Uh, another point to make, and it seems fairly elementary, but as a point of departure, it's a good place uh, to begin. And that is, it's good to keep in mind, in my view, that um, there is no such thing as a leader by themselves. Um, let me give an example of that. Um, when I was abroad, I was, um, one of the things you do because you're not really able to understand the television over there, so in the free time, you uh, usually connect with uh, fellow expatriates and trade books. And one book that I happened to come across and read um, was a rather odd thing about a guy who could see auras. You know, these are the energy fields that um, apparently are around uh, people. And uh, some people, you know, claim that they can read these things. This book was interesting because it was a guy who wrote about auras and about his ability to see auras, but it was done in a rather kind of matter-of-fact way. Uh, he wasn't claiming any kind of special gift or any kind of mystical uh, revelations or anything. It was just something he was kind of born with, and uh, it was just a feature of, of his existence. Um, so. And, and in the book, of course, it was a full book, but it was summarized in the last chapter um, that he had this experience of being in a large um, airport, and it happened that while he was waiting for his flight, um, this huge entourage came in, and it turned out that these were devotees of this guru, um, you know, mystic teacher who uh, had visited the country and was now departing. And uh, the thing about that was that he'd seen uh, with this guru the most brilliant aura he'd ever seen. Uh, it was magnificent and uh, it was very inspiring to him. Um, but then as he was, you know, preparing for the flight. He was going through a security check and he was actually put into a partitioned room uh, away from his followers. And that separation, he could still see through the glass of the partition uh, and was still able to view the aura of this guru. And it had diminished to being something quite ordinary, uh, nothing uh, remarkable at all. And from that experience, he um, drew the conclusion that uh, it was the energy of the followers that had created that amazing aura that he had seen in this one person. And, uh, you know, sort of the takeaway from this story is, and I think it's quite true if you want to come up with uh, a very simple uh, definition of leadership, which is a very complex topic, but if you want a simple definition to me, it is that a leader must have willing followers. So it's something to consider. And I leave it to you to come up with your own ideas about leadership. Um, as I said, I'm just kind of giving you um, some direction on this. The idea that, again, a leader doesn't stand alone. Uh, there is nobody who's a leader by themselves. And we'll of course, be expanding upon some of these themes as we proceed in the class. So again, uh, pay attention to that reading and uh, 
it would be interesting to know your thoughts on it. Okay, thanks.